All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Beamathon weekend two. This is day three of the entire event, and we're going to be kicking this Saturday off with our first workshop, how to build an effective resume. It's now 2 p.m. Eastern time. And before we get started with this amazing workshop, we're just going to introduce, as usual, our first prize opportunity within the first five minutes of this session. So all you have to do, if you want to win some Beam merchandise like this, you want to win some nice stickers like these giant stickers here, all you have to do is just follow Beam community on Instagram and then post an Instagram story about this workshop anytime before the workshop ends around like 2.50 p.m. Eastern time and just tag Beam on our account. And I'll just pick whoever um, has like the funniest picture or like the best picture on their Instagram story for a chance to win some stickers. So you never know, just shoot your shot. I know there are some people who just um, entered this competition and automatically won because they were like the only people who did it. So you never know, just take a picture any anytime there's during this workshop and just tag me in community and you never know what you can win. So without further ado, what I'm going to have um, our speaker do is just share her screen. Let me just, hold on, turn on the options. And feel free to take it away, Shayna. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Shayna Rutman. I am representing Meddling Kids Movement today. I'm the executive director. And today we're going to talk about how do you build an effective resume and cover letter. So what we're going to be covering today is cover letters and just important information regarding resume building. So how do you want to format your resume? Um, information to include, important information, and how do you want to make your resume stand out compared to your opponent? So if you have more questions, uh, feel free to email me or DM me on Instagram to my contact information. So a little bit about me, I'm Shana Rettman. I am 18 and I'm a freshman at American University in Washington, DC, and I'm representing um, Meddling Kids Movement today. I'm the executive director Basically, Meddling Kids Movement is an organization of youth activists who want to share their story. So we have different sectors of activism that we cover and we interview them for the site. Um, so if you are interested in looking and, and learning more, feel free to look at us on Instagram and our website. All right, so we're gonna start off with cover letters. I included links to Skylar if you're gonna share the actual presentation as well. Um, just for like, I, this is where I got most of the information from too. So what are the purpose of cover letters? So really this is essentially why should the employer hire you instead of someone else? What are your qualifications that just make you better and more outstanding than the opponent? Um, this space is where you're gonna identify relevant experiences and skills that you can bring to this position. So what I like to do is think of it as a sales pitch. So this is why you should hire me because blank, blank, blank. Um, I'm gonna show an example as well. So this is where you're gonna focus on your credentials that make you good for this position and not really personal information. That personal information is gonna be more for your interview. Hopefully you get it. Um, and cover letters are not always mandatory, but it does make you stand out. And you do uh, wanna stand out if, you're really like intrigued in this position. So this is where you are also embed all your own personal research about the company and what really you like about the company. So you don't want to sound too generic saying, I like that your model is to have effective communication and make sure everyone has a safe space to congregate. That's too generic because every company kind of situates around that role model, uh, around that model. So you want to make sure to be a little more specific. Um, so this is really just a format of what your cover letter should look like. So your header is your name. You don't have to actually put your address, just like your city, state, country, uh, phone number, email, and then dear whoever, like dear Mr. Miss, Mrs. And by default, if you don't know their um, identity, like, you know, they're female or male, you can just say to whom it may concern. That's why I usually gravitate towards, um, because that's better than assuming, and that's not good. Um, 
so introduction, this is a couple sentences. What are the, what is the position you're applying for and what company is it? And how'd you find out about the job? So did you find it on LinkedIn, Indeed, Handshake, if you're a friend, uh, you have a family or friend that works there, you can, you know, say, I heard from this person. Um, and then in like one to two body paragraphs, meaning like a couple sentences, this is where you're going to elaborate why are you more qualified than someone else for the job. So what can you offer this employer that someone else can't? What makes you super unique to this position? And of course, why do you want to work there? Not for like, you don't want to say the money because I mean, everyone wants to work for money, but like for the experience, is this something that you want to do in your future? Do you want to hopefully get into this field as an adult? Um, is this something you're passionate about? Why is it something you're passionate about? But again, like you'll elaborate more in your interview. Um, and then in a closing sentence or two, just restating your skills that you mentioned in the introduction, that makes you more qualified. And you always want to say thank you. Always want to say thank you for reading, having taking the time to read my resume and cover letter. I really appreciate and I hope you have a great rest of your day. And then your signature is just going to be something like warm regards, sincerely, and then um, your name, your full name. Um, usually, I print out my uh, cover letter and then I actually sign above my typed name. You don't have to do that, but I just do it just so it's like fresh ink and yeah. So this is my cover letter. I obviously blocked out like my important information to not get docs. Um, so that's um, my name, address, email, number. And so you're gonna wanna include today's date, um, your name, or sorry, not your name, but your, the person you're applying for his name. So if you don't know, you can just address it to the company or you can just say um, to whom it may concern. And oh, I can do this here. So the position, so just be specific, copy and paste like what position it is. The location, again, you could just do like city, state, you country. And then dear blank, Mr. whatever. And then, or you could just change it to to whom it may concern. So this is mine. As a freshman in college, I've perfected my strengths in organization, time management, and responsibility. I bring the passion to the application position for organization and business. Also, you'll probably understand, but like the bold is what I usually change. Um, you're more than welcome to copy this format, uh, take a picture. Um, so organization, business, core values include positivity, uplifting, and respect. I would make an excellent blank because I'm open-minded, responsible, and friendly. I feel like there's a great deal I can bring to the organization business because I have excellent time management skills, leadership skills, and can maintain a positive attitude. I would love to discuss further about the valuable contributions I can make for this business. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter and review my resume. I look forward to hearing you soon. So that's it. Um, again, take a picture if you want. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of my cover letter. <laughs> Um, so now we're going to go more extensively into resume building. And my personality trait is like showing off my resume. I'm really proud of it. Um, I actually just updated it a little bit last night, just so it's like better. Um, so why is formatting important? Here you're going to want to grab the employer's attention in at least one to two pages. Uh, formatting meaning just structure, not really like text. I guess like text size and stuff that doesn't really matter as much as um, the type of formatting. So there, you're more than welcome to choose any of these types of um, structures. So chronological is what I do, but it just depends on everyone. So this includes your most recent work history, education, credentials, summary and objective is optional. I don't have that anymore because it took too much space. Um, but again, that summary objective is really what's going to go in your cover letter as well. So you might want to repeat it, you may not, depends. Um, functional, this is what my, I was presenting this to my mom just to practice and this is what her resume looks like. Uh, so it's just organized by her different skills and experiences and or experiences. And then a combination is just a mix of both. So this is a chronological list of work history with a section on different types of skills. So yeah, it, it, again, like this is all up, up to you. How do you want to format your resume? It just personal preference. So what information do you want to include? 
So the objective and summary statement, I should have edited that, that's optional. So uh, remember like this is optional, your education experience. So I'm assuming most of you are in high school. So for now you would wanna include high school, but once you get into college, if you're a freshman in college like me, high school isn't as relevant anymore unless you are continuing positions that you have in from high school, like um, time-wise, which I do. So I'll explain that a little more later. Um, so these are, this is really where you're going to expand on the work experience that are relevant to your position. So you want to focus on your accomplishments in each prior position. This is not where you're going to put references because a lot of employees don't really want the references unless like on the actual application for the job, it says provide two to three references. That's where you can, but not on the actual direct resume because you're going to include the company, the position, the location. So if they want to look into it a little more, they can. Most of them don't. So you don't want to go more than five years in the past unless it's something you're still doing. So for example, I'm Jewish and I used to work as a temple ozer, which is a temple assistant. So like a teacher's, excuse me, a teacher's aide. So I did this when I was like 13 to like 15, 16. So if I still did it today, obviously I would include it. Um, in chronological order. But since I don't, that's not really relevant anymore. But it's still a good idea. My advice is to write out every single position you've ever had on a rough draft of a Google Doc or something. And then for the position, you can just format it in what's relevant to this position specifically. Obviously, a lot of it is going to be customer service and communication. So really something that stands out to you that like, I'm really proud of how I did in this position. You can put um, optional is like the specific and unique skills you've gathered. And that's just depending on the format of your resume. And again, you want to remain in the one to two page range because um, I learned that this mistake that just employers really just don't want to scroll. Like they're reviewing hundreds and hundreds of applications. So it's just better to have it at least in one to two page range. Mine's two because I cannot fit it into one in order for it to be legible. So this is my resume. Um, I updated it. So this is my name, uh, number, location, email, my education. So if you're in college, you're going to want to put your school, where it is. What are you studying? So my major is political science and my minor is uh, justice and women, gender, sexuality studies. And you also want to include your anticipated graduation date, which is mine is May, 2024. Um, you don't have to include your GPA. I just, I did because it was my first semester. So for example, this is all you can see. Um, so my work experience. So this is just the most relevant work experience that I felt comfortable adding. Then I had certifications of like two leadership positions that I've held, and I went more into my volunteer work that I continued. Um, yeah. So we're just going to refresh these important points. So really, your cover letter is highlighting and expanding on certain skills and experiences that would make you the better candidate for the job. Your resume is that concise bulleted summary regarding what you mentioned in your cover letter about the specifics of your skills and experiences. So that is it. It was a little short, but I felt like that was just the most important information to give you. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for coming and I hope I helped. Um, I'm ready for questions now. I think there are some questions that I yeah, for sure. Thank just you so much them. for giving those amazing points. We really enjoyed um, all of those tips about building resumes and stuff. So we're going to go on to the Q&A portion. So I can read off some of the questions that are going on in the chat. But if everyone, if you guys have any further questions, feel free to just drop them in the chat if you want. So there's one question here um, that's asking, does a LinkedIn resume make a good impression? So kind of like along the lines of like any tips you have for building a LinkedIn or kind of like using LinkedIn to your advantage, yeah. like in a resume as a sense. Yeah, so definitely if this is your first time starting off with building a resume, I actually built mine my senior year of high school with a very good um, program through my high school. Fortunately, I don't have access to it anymore, but um, 
I personally haven't actually directly used LinkedIn to make my resume, but it is a good idea if this is your first time, definitely structure in again, like gather all of your jobs that are relevant to the position. So you don't want to just go on a tangent of, I've had every single position ever. No, you want to think of what is really relevant and what is actually going to help me get this job potentially. So um, yeah, I would definitely recommend using app like Indeed or LinkedIn to structure off your first type of resume. And it doesn't really matter what format you use again, it's all personal preference. So it's really just, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think those are amazing tips. Um, let's see. Um, another question is, what should we mention in our first line in our resume? So maybe I think that could relate to like, what's best put like towards the top and then like what's yeah. best put like towards the bottom of the resume. Yeah, I can reshare my screen just to show. Um, let me go back. Is it not gonna, of course it's not gonna work. All right, uh, so let's go back to my resume example. So, um, here you're gonna just wanna put for the first few lines, your name, your location. So I live in Carlsbad, California, United States. And your email, your number. Uh, so again, you don't have to, depending on what format you use, you do not have to do like a summary objective statement. I did have one, but I felt that it was just too extensive. And I already mentioned that in my cover letter. So why should I just repeat it in my resume? I wanna make it easier on the employers. So um, yeah, your education, work experience, certifications, like it's really just depending on what you do. So um, I'm assuming most of you do volunteer experience, definitely include volunteer experience. If you have certifications in like, in um, different fields, definitely include that if you do have certifications, not like first aid, but like, you know, relevant, like I'm in a community-based research scholarship program at my university. And that's, a, I'm getting the certification next semester, but I just felt like I should just include it for now because I'm in the course right now. So, yeah, you can take a picture of this too, um, if you want. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think that's very helpful. We're definitely going to share um, an email with all the slides and everything from all the speakers. Right. So stay tuned for that for everyone who attends. Um, let's see, another question. Someone's asking, is a two-page resume too long for a high schooler? Like, what are your recommendations on the actual length? A lot of people say, like, it's like one page, or can we go over? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to remain in the one to two page range. So I would say if um, you're, how do I address it? Okay. So if you are very involved with everything you included in that two page resume, keep it. But I would say structure it in like single space format, smaller text, um, like how I did it. Uh, Cause it's still legible, but it's just, it's condensed because um, yeah, I, like, yes, I'm in college, but, and I have a lot that I'm involved in, probably too much I'm involved in, but I don't really think a two-page resume is too long for anyone. I think it's just structure and format-wise, you should condense it into, like, single space, smaller text, so it does try and fit into that one-page range, because, again, you have to think about the employers are, excuse me, are reviewing hundreds and hundreds of applications. So you want to make it a little easier on them, um, especially because your cover letter is going to entail like specific, like those experiences and skills that you've learned along the way. Yeah, thank you so much for that awesome advice. Um, let's see. So another question is, I heard that employers don't like logos, pictures, or columns. Is that true? So kind of like all those extra designs and graphics, like is it better to keep it simple or can we add pictures or something? Yeah. Okay. So if you're applying, let me say, for example, like if you're applying for a graphic design position that you have to actually provide examples, I would assume that you could, um, there would be a space on the direct application to include where like your resume portfolio folder. So I would definitely sway away from logos and logos and pictures. Columns, I actually haven't heard about that. I have columns just to divide. Uh, this is my position that I had from, or excuse me, this is the dates I've held this position for, and then everything else is on the right. I just, per it doesn't really matter. I've never actually heard about the columns. 
So I think, again, it's just depending on the employer. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think it depends on like the type of job that you're applying to. So definitely agree. Um, let's see for another question. Would you recommend that we add our high school grades um, if they're not necessarily that good or we don't really we're not really that confident with them? So what's yeah. your take on that? Okay, so I would definitely, GPA is optional. You don't actually have to add your high school grades. Some positions maybe are going to want to see like an unofficial transcript of your, uh, what's it called, grades. Um, I only had one position that I've applied for that asked for it. And I was like, okay, it's not a big deal. Like I, I was personally pretty proud of my grades, but that's because I'm also in college. So I would say high school grades, if you want to add your GPA, you can, if you want to, if you don't want to, that's okay too. Just like um, include the most important is uh, the type, the name of your school, the location and your anticipated graduation. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. So Esther's asking, I have a lot of things that I do. So should I list all of them or should I just list a few that are important? Yeah, so what I would do, what I how I started off was I literally found every single position I've ever had in my, let's say like from 13 years old to today, so 18. So I literally wrote it down on a Google Doc. I typed it all out, like this is the position I held at this company for this amount of time. And then I just went back and I chose the most relevant um, positions to include in my actual resume. So you can edit it depending, like I would say make a copy of different resume formats so you can include the most relevant again. I would say like mine has at least six, but that's because they're all relevant to really just customer service. And I've had multiple positions of like working with kids, working in retail, working with other people. You know, I've done a lot, I've been all over the map. Um, so, yeah, again, I would definitely like make a, a rough outline of all your positions and then just go through there, go from there and say, is this really important for me to include in my resume for this specific position? Because it's going to be different for every position. Yeah, for sure. I think it's very important to emphasize that quality over quantity when it comes to listing things on your resume. Um, let's see. So Jessica is asking, so if we're trying to make a resume, and we don't have any job experience, um, what do you recommend that we add maybe some like skills or like some high school experiences? So like, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, so I haven't actually had my first job. So in California, you're allowed to start working at 16. So before then, I didn't really think about having a resume. So what I would recommend is definitely skills, but you wanna include like unique skills. Like I'm good at coding, like, with computer stuff, because that's what a lot of employers are like gravitating towards, especially think about the post pandemic world, I would say. Um, if you don't have a job experience yet, that's totally okay to list your volunteer experience. What have you done within your school? Maybe a part of clubs, different organizations, excuse me, different organizations. You could include babysitting. That's always a good one. Um, uh, like dog walking, really just like anything that's helping out your community, you can just put as volunteer. And then um, you'll obviously start getting job experiences soon, you know, hopefully post pandemic, like that's all gonna be a lot more fair and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see, another question is, is it good to add links of our certificates or personal websites within our resume? Yeah, so not on your resume, but the application itself should have links like important links to add or if it says like any further comments to add or anything else you want us to know that's where you would say I would like to include some links um, from my certificate programs and or personal websites below label them and yeah you should be all good so you can just submit that with the application yeah for sure oh my god yeah a lot of questions flowing in so Another question is, what should your career objective be, especially as a high schooler? So I guess that kind of goes along with the lines of like, what are, at what place should you be in within your professional career in terms of like creating resumes? Like, 
like what should you do in like high school to prepare for your professional life I would definitely say get as involved as you can with stuff that you're actually interested in, not like stuff you feel pressure to do just to build up a job resume, because right now it's hard. I would say if you're a part of ASB, definitely include that. That's leadership skills. If you are a pr- club president, include that. That's leadership skills. And that's like really important. Um, if you've like been a teacher's aide or something, include that. Like if you have volunteered with your church, temple, mosque anything religious based uh anything like babysitting um swim instructor you know just build up everything that you really think is relevant again like that's probably my most important advice when building a resume because everyone is different when it comes to a career objective and it's just i would definitely say be open-minded because just take whatever um you're comfortable with taking and just think it's a good idea like I'm really open-minded like I definitely don't see myself like working specifically and like as a government representative but I do see myself like working on the hill like I'm in Washington DC like I'm definitely it's very common to have a it's called a hill turnship so like working on the hill so I would say again just everyone's career objective is different and just again this is important information is relevant. Yeah, I think that's very important to know as well. So another question is, would a Coursera or EDX course, or edX course, <laughs> um, um, boost your resume? So like, do you recommend taking any of those courses and like adding them to your resume? Yeah, again, oh, that's actually a good point too. For education under high school, adding relevant courses that you've taken is also a good idea. So if you think that taking a, a specific like coding class and you apply, for example, for a certain like computer company, um, like say for example, you're applying to Microsoft. Um, definitely if you take, if you've taken like computer classes, if you've taken coding classes, include that under your education, like in that region um, and add relevant course experiences and, or relevant courses, excuse me, and then list specific courses and they'll probably ask you in the interview for elaboration. Yeah, I think that's some really great advice. So another question that's been pretty common is, can you explain the applicant tracking system? I'm not really familiar with what that is. Is that kind of just like the way they evaluate like the resumes? I know there's like ways that they scan the resumes, but I'm not sure if that's exactly what people are talking yeah. about in the applicant tracking system. Yeah, I think it's really just depending on the company. I've never really heard a lot about this, but from what I'm assuming, maybe it just look into the company and even like, I'm assuming, because I do know for a fact that certain um, people like go through hundreds of applications so it's just going to take, I guess, in a time frame, you should hear back in at least two weeks to a month. And that's just depending on how popular this position is or how popular this company is to work for. So if you haven't heard back past that, I would definitely say contact them saying, hi, I applied to this position a month ago or a month and a half ago. Uh, can I please have some updates on how long it's going to be? Um, also, make sure you email that after you check like your junk and spam folder because things trickle in and I've learned that before too. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see. Another question is what color should be used in a way? If- yeah, so I would definitely say neutral colors. You don't want to really be popping out like this pink shirt that I'm wearing. No, but like something like neutral, like blues, darker blues, browns, blacks, it doesn't really matter to color scheme. You can probably just like look up on Google for like examples. And I think people are going to stay in that more darker tone texture um, just because it's just, you don't want to make it like a pretty resume. You want to make it like a very professional, like this is the next step in your career and your life. Yeah, for sure. Like Simplicity is the way to go, pretty much. And let's see, another question is from Elizabeth. She She's asking, when you're applying to college or an internship, is leadership and extracurriculars more important than awards and work experience, or does it vary by institution? Ooh, that's a really good question, Elizabeth. Um, I would say does vary. 
I think it varies because of it's really how popular is this company? How popular is this position? Um, I would definitely say include your work experience and then include your extracurriculars like volunteer work, certi certifications, um, because all of it is pretty important. I think they just, they are gonna wanna see, do you, are you gonna be a good fit? Like, is this relevant work that's gonna actually help you? Um, so like a work experience, like, working in a lot of customer service uh, positions myself, I learned that all of them are pretty important to everything, so. Yeah, for sure. So Chris is asking, what skills are important to have in a resume? So maybe you can go along the difference between like technical skills, like those hard skills, and then those soft skills, like leadership and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, all right, that's a really good question. So. So as Skylar previously mentioned, you have soft skills and hard skills. Companies nowadays are wanting to see more hard skills. So if you, again, if we're going to go back to that Microsoft example, if you're applying to Microsoft and you have a lot of um, skill sets in the computer field, I don't know the terminology for this, but like coding, you want to include like programs you've used for coding, um, different computer skill sets that you have, like stuff like that. Um, and soft skills are more like your leadership, like extracurricular skills, like um, I'm really good at organization, time management. That's what's gonna be mentioned in your cover letter primarily and a little bit elaborated on with your work experiences. Yeah, for sure. So we actually have someone raising their hand in the audience. So Pranav, if you want to go and unmute and ask your question, if you had one. Yeah, thank you, Skylar. <coughs> uh, so hi, Shaina. Uh, I just shared uh, a link in the chat box. So uh, my request is, can you please uh, have a look at the resume uh, and uh, please share your feedback? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll look at that a little later and then I can, if you want to send me your email, I can email you about it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. So let's see. Another question is... Is there a specific age that you need to be in order to apply for internships or to make a resume or can you just start right away? Yeah, resume building is always important to start off with now. I would definitely say if you are like 15 to 16, definitely start now because I know a lot of states in the United States at least, like you're starting to drive so you're gonna be able to like get accessibility to places. I'm not sure about other countries, maybe 17 to 18, but it is important to start just a draft of resume um, building now and just kind of play around with it. It's gonna take time to find what you're comfortable with. I've like worked on my resume so much because I'm like, is this good? Like, is this how I want to appeal to my potential employer? And to apply for internships, you do have to be 18, I believe in the States. I, it might vary in different countries around the world, but I do know like most internships are gonna be 18. Yeah, sounds awesome. So let's see, another question is from Lexi, and she's asking, if you're involved in a lot of clubs in high school, should you include the events you were involved in creating or attending, plus the positions you held in those clubs? Yeah, okay. So I was, as someone who's been very involved with clubs in high school, definitely don't include the specific events you were involved in, but include the positions you held in that club. So for example, I was um, a representative of No Place for Hate at my high school, uh, my junior and senior year. So just No Place for Hate, um, italicized representative, and then just like little bullet points of like, I helped create some events such as blank, blank, blank. Um, so that's where like you can elaborate a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. I think that's really great advice. So let's see. Another question is, if we are doing some things which are out of our major, like, for example, painting or photography, should we mention that as a hobby section in our resume? Okay, so I wouldn't necessarily call it a hobby section. I would say gravitate more towards like extracurriculars. So definitely including like painting experience. Maybe if you've had relevant positions, like have you been a painting instructor? Have you had jobs taking photos of weddings, of 
whatever you take photos of? Um, have you been hired specifically? So you can include, if you've been hired, you can include that in the work experience. But if it's necessarily just like relevant skills, you can include that in your, um, probably towards like a, uh, what's it called? Uh, extracurriculars. Like this is stuff I'm involved in. I think this is relevant to the position. So if it's re only if it's relevant to the position, if you're applying to like be a customer service representative, obviously painting or photography is not really going to be as important. That's just more of a hobby. So. Awesome. So let's see. Another question is from Victory and he's asking, how should we organize our LinkedIn? Maybe some like tips on like LinkedIn building, stuff like that. So I'm gonna include my LinkedIn below. I'm pretty sure it's just my name. So that's my LinkedIn if you wanna check it out. So your LinkedIn really just um, how, I would say if you've had previous employers def and just like experiences with other people, definitely have them like boost you in, um, what's it called? Ooh, I haven't been on LinkedIn. For the that, endorsements, I believe. Endorsements, yes, thank you. So um, also like I have a lot of relevant skills I've included on my LinkedIn. I included a bunch of my um, employment. I also have a link to my resume as well. And it is structured. Like when I inputted my personal resume document into LinkedIn, I just had to make it a couple tweaks here and there to make it like structured. And then from there, I just posted it. Yeah, for sure. I think those are very important things to add. Um, okay, so yeah, Victory is actually raising his hand in the Zoom, so feel free to unmute and ask your question. Okay, hey. Um, Hi. I'm actually applying to college right now, and as a high school, I've been involved in like tons of extracurricular activities, like seven or eight, and I put them all on my resume, and my resume is about four pages long currently, and it needs to not be that but all of my extracurriculars are in line with my major. So they're all relevant to like okay. the actual thing. So I know like it's not supposed to go past one or two pages because these people have other things that they need to do and other resumes that they need to read. But like, how do I shorten it? How, what, yeah. what, what are some things I should cut out? Yeah. Oh, for that's a really good, that's a really good question. That's really cool that you're like very, very involved. I would definitely say first off the text size, as long as it's legible, make it as small as you can, but like make sure it's again legible. So like 10 to 11, make it single spaced. So make sure it's like clumped closer together in lines. Um, so make headers smaller. Um, from, the, from there, then if you've done all of that and it's still maybe like it's gravitated toward th two to three pages or something, I would definitely say look specifically at what you wrote. And if it's like you were writing at least a sentence, maybe like if you wrote a couple sentences, at least try and make it one sentence. Like try and make a one sentence summary of this specific position. And that should help you um, shorten it out. If you want to, like I'm more than happy to um, look at resumes too. Uh, to like give advice from like a student and like I'm more than happy to share my resume too again um, in the chat uh, for like viewing purposes so I can do that um, but yeah my email if you do want like me to look at your resume and like give some like feedback I'm more than happy to help out um, just like Give me, I, I'm better on weekends. I'm in 17 and a half credits, but like I could definitely look more towards weekends, um, but I am moving next week. So we're just gonna like, just give me some time and I'll definitely, I'm more than happy to help out because this is very important. I'm also gonna share my resume in the chat as well. Okay, okay. If so, if I emailed you today, how long would it take you to look at it? Yeah, honestly, I could probably look at it tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty, perfect. So let's see another question. Yeah, it's one of our last ones. So if you guys have like any other questions, just feel free to put them in before we end off with our social media competition and stuff like that. So one last question is, should we mention our job description and responsibilities on each of the experiences that we have listed on the resume? 
So I just shared my resume in the chat so you can view on how I did mine. It's pretty brief bullet points and I've condensed the spacing a lot. So it does gravitate toward that one to two page range. Mine's at least like one, like mine's like two pages um, or one and a half. So yeah, your job description. So this is how I'm gonna share my screen again. Do, do, do. Unless you're already viewing at it. Um, all right, so we're gonna look. So this is my work experience. I trust you guys not to like do anything with my phone number because I just don't feel like taking it out because I feel like I'll forget to put it in. Um, so yeah, I just wrote three to four bullet points. So since these are a lot of past tense, like I don't currently work at the YMCA right now, I said design fun camp activities for all campers to participate in and enjoy. And for example, for a position I'm currently involved in, uh, so let's talk about community-based research scholar for my certifications. Participating in community service outreach and out, community service and outreach programs, learning what it means to be a good leader and Samaritan in my community. And this is everything, my volunteer stuff. So again, if you're, if I'm still involved with it. I am still a founder of Persons for Purpose. Um, I'm still an executive director of the Mentally Kids Movement. So it's all in present tense. Um, and then stuff that I'm not in right now, this was just like a couple month thing, like this is gonna be a past, so yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that overview. Um, let's see, another question is from Emily and she's asking, should we mention smaller volunteering? Like for example, if I volunteered for a few days at a food bank, should I mention that? Um, so I would say if it's a repetitive, repetitive uh, thing you're doing, like if you work at that food bank, like every week, yes, include that. Like I um, used to work at a, um, as a volunteer for this uh, Pegasus Rising, which is a, basically I work with horses and like, you know, clean up their stuff. And um, it's basically that organization primarily helps veterans struggling with PTSD symptoms. So, um, yeah, I would, I had that in my resume, but I'm not really involved with it as much anymore because I just don't have the time anymore. Um, but I would include that if I was still doing it every other week. Yes, I would include that because it's been like five years. My dad's done it for five years. So he already has a job. But like if he does, if he wanted to include that in his resume, he probably would because that's like a, he's done it for at least five to six years. So if you've done it for a few days, I would say no, that's more just like, good for you though, for working at Food Bank, like that's really, I love doing that. Um, but if it's like, if you work at it every week or every other week, definitely include that. Then. Yeah, for sure. I think so. That's some very good advice. So let's see. I don't think there's any more questions. Oh, there we go. So Victor, if you want to go ahead and- my, my and <laughs> Oh no, you're good, you're good. It takes much time. <laughs> um, I didn't even think to include volunteering on it. I have like 80 hours of community service, but but like I listened to everything that you just said. And I was, there's a lot of places in which I've only volunteered there for like a couple weeks, like coming there three times a week for a couple, is that like yeah. good enough? Okay. Like, yeah, so since you said your resume is four pages, I would sway away from including that yeah. because it's already pretty long. <laughs> so if you cut back a lot and you notice that like, oh, like I'm back in that like one to two page range, I think it'd be include, important to include like my favorite like two to three volunteer experiences. Then you can put it there. But since you're saying that you have like a four page resume, I would say definitely like start by cutting everything back first and then let's see from there. So I'm more than happy to schedule calls too. Like I'm on the West Coast right now, but I will be on the East Coast starting next week and I will have a lot more availability. Um, yay. So <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. I don't think there's any other questions, but yeah, since that's pretty much it, yeah, just feel free to contact Shayna at her email that she listed in the chat or her LinkedIn as well. But yeah, since that's pretty much it, thank you so much, Shayna, for hosting this workshop and answering everyone's questions. Everyone give her a hype up in the chat. Thank you, thank you for that advice and everything. Every yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. If you guys are interested, 
learn more about meddling kids movement that's like my like my um second or my what's it called like god child i'm not the founder but <laughs> someone else is i just took over so yeah yeah for sure so before we end off with our social media competition just kind of uh goodbyes and stuff like that we're going to take a quick picture with everyone so if you want to turn on oh wait did she leave what <laughs> Hold on. Give me a second. What? Why'd she leave? Okay, I guess I guess we're just gonna have to take a picture without her. I don't know if her thing just went off. Um, but we're just gonna take a picture. So everyone turn on those cameras. Let's go. <laughs> let's make up for this. Okay, let, let's let's get the vibes. I don't know what happened. I literally don't why is she not here? Maybe maybe it's okay. We'll uh <laughs> <laughs> we'll 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 see we'll just tag her in it all right turn on those cameras let's get hype let's get hype up in here look at that <laughs> I love how she maybe it's just like uh maybe it's just like the power I don't know turn on those cameras let's go oh my god almost got that full screen Co two more rows two more rows so close guys look at that oh my god I love uh people's backgrounds so the oh my god are you Y'all, we all we are, we almost got it. Or else I'm gonna have to turn on that. What is that thing that the hide the non-video participants? Oh my god, oh my god, more people, more people! Turn on those cameras. Let's go, detective. Who's detective? <laughs> oh, let's show. That's the name of the background characters, like show from like, the anime. That's what the anime is called. Oh. Detective Conan. Yeah. I'm so uncultured. I don't know any of this. <laughs> my all my friends like watch animes and stuff like that. I'm, I should get more into that. Oh my god, more people! Come on, we need that last row. <laughs> Where is Shayna? Where did she go? Where did she leave? <laughs> no. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Okay. Okay. I guess. I guess that's um that's the best we could do. So let me let me see if I can. Can I? Oh. We got more people. Let's see if I can hide non-video participants. That looks a bit better. Okay. Are you ready, guys? Okay, so let's let's just do a peace sign. A yeah, sure, double peace signs. Okay. Three, two, one. Yes, love it. Again, we're gonna have to do that another basic pose to start off the day. So let's do a a nice heart here or the <laughs> it's it's always boomy doing being being very quirky with her new heart oh i guess are we divided now we're divided guys look at <laughs> look at the division in the zoom ready three two one hey okay so we got that so now we're just going to go with our cute little video thing so i'm going to why, why are people leaving now we're trying to take pictures hey the k-pop heart yes the k-pop heart guys all right so i'm gonna oh, i need to go to my steps okay let me let me see what i'll just i'll just play this song just do a random one okay when and then when i say to wave just wave that's when the beat drops okay okay hold on give me a second Hey, wait. Thanks for coming, everyone. Be with on weekend two. Building resumes workshop. Oh, so cute. Okay. Oh my god, love that. Okay, period. All right. So now that we've got that over with, we're going to go into the anticipated event which is the social media competition winner announcement so can we get a drum roll please I hope. Okay, yeah. all right three two one this better have been edited <laughs> three two one and congratulations y'all for winning beam stickers and don't worry if you didn't get the chance to win yet you'll have so many other opportunities hype up everyone in the chat for winning stickers 
um, if I throw this, I'm gonna have to clean a lot tonight. So maybe I'll do that like towards the end. Um, so I'll clean up a little bit less tonight, but congratulations everybody. And hold on, before I end this. You learned um, from the first time that you threw those stickers, didn't you? <laughs> I learned, but I'm still gonna do it anyway. So that I guess I didn't really learn anything. Okay. Alrighty guys, so I'll see you in the next workshop in a few minutes. See y'all.